Yes, I can. All good. All right. We will go ahead and get started here with Tyler Strafacci at the Farmers Insurance Open. Tyler is the uh, reigning U.S. Amateur champion. He's made uh, two starts on the PGA Tour uh, prior to this week. So, Tyler, if we could just get an opening comment from you. Uh, how does it feel to be teeing it up this week at Torrey Pines? Yeah, it's great. Um, it's always a dream to play in a PGA Tour event. I got a couple lined up and going to try to make the most of it. But this week's going to be great just to get my feet wet and see what I'm all about. I mentioned you've made uh, two starts in the PGA Tour um, prior to this week, both coming in 2018. What did you learn uh, from those experiences that you feel like could help you uh, this week? Yeah, so just everything I learned in those two, like the Valspar and the U.S. Open was um, just about managing my game, just kind of standing within myself and playing kind of what got me there. Um, I felt like I kind of changed a little bit when I played in those events, and this time I'm just going to be Tyler and just play my game and add them up at the end. And there's another uh, former U.S. amateur champion from Georgia Tech in the field this week, and Andy Ogletree. What's your relationship uh, like with him, and have you made uh, you know any other connections with some of the other Georgia Tech players out here? Yeah, so me and Andy were roommates for three years. He's he's a really good friend of mine. Um, we actually played yesterday on the South Course, and we had a great time. Just I hadn't seen him in a couple months, so it was good to catch up and share some memories and give each other some tough times. But uh, yeah, he's great. He's Good kid, really good player. He's playing well this week. Um, and I've also saw Vince Whaley, who I was uh, on a team for one year with him. Uh, he's a great, great guy. Um, someone I've kind of looked up to in the past, kind of being a young kid on the team. And it's it's going to be fun kind of reconnecting with those guys over the next few events. All right, with that, we will open it up to uh, the media that we have on the line. If you have a question, please type your name into the chat window, and I will call on you. We'll give those a second to come in here. Uh, we will start with uh, Steve Hummer of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, uh, Tyler, how you doing? Good, Steve. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Um, hey, um, I don't imagine the, the, the decision to skip the last semester of Tech was that hard for you, right? Was it, was it tough? Yeah, it was, I mean, it's always hard kind of leaving your friends and a coach that's meant so much to you. Um, but it's just one of those things that I kind of knew I was ready after talking with my parents and my support system, and I, I just felt ready. I, again, it, it didn't feel good leaving um, my roommates there and some of the guys I was mentoring on the team, but it's, it's what happens. We're kind of living in a weird time, and sometimes you got to make somewhat of a selfish decision. I don't, uh, Jack, do I have time for a couple questions, or how do you want to do this? Yeah, um, we've only got a few on the line, so. Uh, okay, I don't want to. I don't want to. You let let me know. I'm I'm manip or uh, own it too much here. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, and I, I wanted to find out too about the. Um, uh, you have you have a, a pretty ambitious first half of the year here, and uh, uh, what are you hoping to get out of this start? And 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 I don't know how you how did you stay ready? I guess to for. For what uh, for what's coming here? Yeah, so I didn't really have that many events leading up to this. I played in a couple um, minor league pro tour events down in South Florida and a couple amateur events. Um, but I feel good. I just, I mean, I'm probably gonna be a little rusty when I tee off. But it's the quicker I get into my round, the better it's gonna be. I'm sure I'm gonna have really good stretches of golf over the next few days and just learn from it and hopefully make the weekend kind of make some noise out there. But the next four or five events is just getting my mind and game ready to where when I turn pro, I'm, I'm ready to accomplish some of my goals. Where are you, go, where are you making your home? So I live in uh, Fort Lauderdale with my girlfriend. Um, kind of moved out the parents' house and joined a club and kind of starting to be an adult. It's nice. <laughs> well, welcome to adulthood. Yeah, it's different. And... Uh... What was that? Uh, what was your conversation like with Bruce? Uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this and let see if anybody else has a question. Uh, when you when you were getting ready to go, what uh, what was the conversation like? Yeah, Coach. Uh, to be honest, he he kind of was he was questioning why I was making this decision, and um, he thought it was best that I would come back. Um, he kind of wanted me to be there for the young guys, but at the same time, I think he knew I was ready. Um, so I 
I, I know he was proud of me for the decision I made, and I know he's in my corner. Um, I love the guy to death. Um, but anytime you lose uh, Andy, Luke, and I, it's our top three guys last year. It's tough for him. So he was, he's a he's a great guy, great mentor, and I'm looking forward to being part of the program moving forward. You still got any tech stuff on your bag this week, or? Yeah, I got a couple tech head covers. Um, I don't okay. have my staff bag yet, so I'm waiting to put my GT on it. But it's uh, tech's always gonna be near and dear to me. Appreciate it, man. Of course. Not sure if we have any more questions for Tyler. Um, I see Ron and Todd on the line. If you guys have questions, um, feel free to go ahead and ask. Or Steve, if you have more, you can ask. Well, I've got a couple more, if, uh, if that's okay. Oh. oh, sorry, Todd, go ahead, if you, if, you, uh, if you have a question. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Todd, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. I um, wanted to find out, what is your um, experience at Torrey Pines? Had you had much before this week? Uh, I'd been in San Diego once. I played in the Junior Worlds when I think I was maybe 11 or 12 years old. Um, it was a long time ago, but it was it was cool to just come out here. And I remember I walked with my dad out on the south course um, after the tournament had finished. And just such a special place. It's beautiful. Um, it's very... It's playing, it's very scenic. The north course is also very scenic, and it's just, it's very cool. I'm looking forward to walking down the fairways, looking over the cliffs, and kind of just having a nice, relaxing round of golf. So no rounds until yesterday? Uh, no, I mean, I played on nine holes on Sunday, but yesterday was kind of my first round on the south course. Okay. Uh, who's caddying for you? Um, so my buddy, Brett Benjamin, he's a caddied for me in the past um I met him at the junior players um I think six years ago and he's just been a great friend he knows a lot about golf um and he's he's worked I mean he's caddy on tour a couple times and stuff like that so he's definitely someone I can kind of lean on for advice and kind of keep me loose throughout the round Tyler um you spoke earlier that in those first two pro events you didn't necessarily feel like yourself um what did you feel like out there in those first couple, and what are you trying to kind of progress on as these starts go? Yeah, so, I mean, when I was, I played in them when I was 19. So, I mean, 19, playing the tour, all I was thinking about was making the cut. Um, and I was playing well enough to make the cut and have a pretty good finish in both of them, but I was so focused on making the cut that I kind of gravitated towards the cut line. And uh, that's... That's not how I usually play golf. Usually I play golf to win and try to put myself in a position on the last day of the tournament to have a to have a good chance to win. But that's kind of what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to I'm sure there's going to be some growing pains. Um, winning winning out here is going to take a lot better golf than winning in college or amateur golf. So I'm going to learn how to do that, and hopefully I can learn how to do that very quickly so I can uh, accomplish the goals. Do you feel different as a golfer, as the USAM champion? Uh, Do you feel different out on the course? Yeah, I feel more confident. It almost frees me up in a way, um, just because that's something I've wanted to accomplish for a lot of time, and it's it's just a cool thing to have on your resume when you're older and something I'm going to look back on. But it's more confidence. I feel freed up. Uh, I feel like I've established myself in the game of golf. Now i got to establish myself on the PGA Tour, so it's going to take some time. Thank you, Tyler. Of course. Steve, if you have more <clears throat> questions, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, just a couple just a couple quick ones. Is your family out there? Have they, have they been able to get out there and follow you? Uh, so my, my dad's out here. Um, he was yeah. not planning on coming because he had a vaccine scheduled on Thursday, but it got canceled. Um, so he's yeah. he came here, and he's keeping me keeping me loose. And I'm, I, I said if something happens I'd love to have you here because I it's one of those things my first time in a tour event quite some time it wouldn't be a bad thing to have some familiar faces but I'm missing my mom and brother and my girlfriend wish they were here but I'm sure down the road in the season we'll we'll have them out here and we'll have a good time and what is the comfort level having Andy there too I mean having somebody you, you know so well yeah I mean it's 
it's weird. It's kind of like my, I, I told my caddy, it's like my first day at school. I'm excited, but I don't really know anybody. Um, so it was, it was good to see Andy. Andy asked me, hey, do you want to go play 18 on the south? And I was like, of course. Um, so playing with him really freed me up yesterday. And it's good to kind of have some sort of common ground with people out here. And I'm sure over the next whatever events I get in this season, I'll develop some relationships and some friendships, hopefully, and it'll be a good time. And i got to ask you about the Masters, too. How much have you circled that, and how much is of, of what you're doing the next few months is to get ready for that? Because you oh. saw what Andy did there. And, and oh, yeah. I'm sure that was that had to uh, that had to get you going a little bit, too. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely in the back of my mind. I'm, it's not everything I'm focused on right now, um, but it's always a good thing to go to sleep at night knowing you're playing the Masters. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, but most often I'm just focused on the next couple events before the Masters and trying to put myself in a position where I can compete and hopefully have a chance to win. Well, did you see him? Did you watch uh, on that uh, on the last day, see him in the cabin and everything? And oh, yeah. Say, okay, it, uh, I want to do that. I want to do that. It definitely gave me some fuel. Um, it gave me some fuel last time when he won the AM because I was like, here's a guy I've been competing with for four years and he won something I've wanted for pretty much my whole life. So that that kind of lit a fire under me. And um, I think him getting low M at the Masters kind of did the same thing. But, again, we're both friends, both competitors, and I want the best for him, and he wants the best for me, so it's been great. Beat him yesterday? Uh, we didn't play a match. We just kind of – he he played better than I did. Um, he looked a little more comfortable out there, but we didn't really play a match. Um, but we just had a good time catching up. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Good luck this week. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Julie Williams. Go ahead, Julie. Hello. Um, I think I was a few minutes late. I just wanted to know, have, have you talked about the Walker Cup already, Tyler? I have not, Julie. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> uh, maybe you can just kind of tell me a little bit more about the decision. The last thing I read, you were planning to wait for that turn professional after. So obviously it's very important to you, and I think we kind of know the history of you know why you were gunning for that. But maybe talk about just why you know why that's important to you. Um, I mean, it's important to me because it's something that my father's been talking about ever since I was a little kid. I never met my grandfather, but my grandfather always talked to my father about how him not being able to make the team because of his last name um, was tough, uh, and it kind of it really bothered my grandfather, and. It kind of led into my father, and that's something I've been kind of playing for since I started playing amateur golf. So I definitely didn't want to be the, I definitely want to be the first Strafacci um, to play in the Walker Cup, and that's something I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. Do you know Seminole? Do you have any experience there? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been playing a lot of practice rounds out there. I've been going out with Captain Crosby um, and this guy, Mr. Sanger, and a couple other guys, and I've probably played five rounds there since I finished since I knew I was playing on the team. So I've gotten some good prep, and it helps that it's about an hour drive. So we kind of have some sort of in-and-out privileges where I can go there kind of once a week and do some prep work. So it's I'm going to be ready for that tournament. Where are you based and, and practicing right now? I mean, where are you spending most of your time? So I'm a, I'm based in Fort Lauderdale, um, but I play a golf course in Delray Beach, which is just north of Fort Lauderdale, kind of south of Palm Beach, um, called Pine Tree. Um, Pine Tree is a great place. It's um, Gary Woodland and David Hearn are out there, so it's got some really good competition, and the course is really tough, and it's kind of one of those courses that if you play well there, you can play well anywhere else. Um, so just being out there is really good prep for the next couple tournaments, and I feel ready. If I could ask just one more, uh, you know, now that you're playing tour events, um, do you imagine that you'll go back and play anything amateur? I mean, you could play the Jones Cup. You could warm up for the Masters with the Azalea or any of those on the table. Um, I I think the Azalea is probably the most possible one for me to play in. But right now, I'm just kind of focused on a lot a lot of the stuff over the next couple months. I'm going to take a couple Augusta trips. Um, that would be kind of during some amateur events, and I think that'd be a little more valuable for me. Um, I, I feel like I've pretty much done a lot of the stuff I want to do in amateur golf. So it's right now it's I'm in a kind of a weird position because I feel like I'm ready to move on, but I kind of have to wait for 
a while before I turned pro, so I'm kind of in an interesting situation. Uh, but yeah, I, if I, if an amateur event comes up and I'm have a free schedule, I'd love to play in it. But right now, it's I might play in the Azalea, but most likely not. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tyler, those are all the questions we have. Uh, we appreciate your time, and best of luck this week at the Farmers Insurance Open. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.